Dr. Shelby Knotts. I work for the Defense Force against alternate beings on Earth, or something of that caliber. I don't remember the name of where I work. You may be able to hear in the background some of our um, alternate beings that are not supposed to be here on Earth. One moment, please. So, despite the fact that I put them in bed, they are still chirping, which is very strange. But, let's try to ignore that. I have a very special task today, which is why you are in my home. And I have to record this session. I hate putting on gloves. My room is burning hot as well, so that kind of sucks. It's almost 80 degrees in my room because the birds were getting... Oh, I ripped my glove. Oh, well. The birds were getting too cold. It's okay that I ripped my gloves. I don't necessarily think I even need them in the first place, but I was told to wear them. There. And please excuse if you can hear the dog in the background. I'm only going to wear one glove. I don't really feel like putting on the other. So, today's creature is this thing. We don't know where it came from. We don't know how smart it is, but we do know that these little jag or er, little jagged, these little shaggy parts of its body is or can produce electricity if it feels like it needs it. I'm thinking perhaps the alternate reality birds are up because I'm talking, but that shouldn't be an issue because they were fine with it last time. Anyways, so as you can see, it has no arms or legs. I must support its body with my hands. I don't know why they told me to wear gloves considering the fact that these I can still get shocked with. but. I'm only going to wear one, so don't get mad at me and don't fire me. You're the ones who sent me home with this guy. So we don't know, well, obviously he doesn't understand any normal language since, you know, he's not from this wor world. We do know that he can bend at odd areas without feeling any sort of pain. You can also squeeze him. Numerous x-rays have shown that he does not have a brain, yet he seems very intelligent. And we're just calling it a he. We do not know his actual gender, but we found calling it a he is just something we do naturally around our shop, or a shop, whatever you want to call it. Our agency, I suppose. So let me get my I hate typing with gloves. He weighs less than a pound. And he does make a very distinct noise when he is distressed. He will make a sort of clicking noise. Not necessarily like, like, not like that, or not like that either. More like, um, like that. Or he'll go if he's very distressed. We've only had that happen once, and that was during transportation from New Mexico, where we collected this fella, to our agency here in Washington State. So, I'm going to cradle him like a child, and I'm going to take this Q-tip here, and I'm just going to do a sample. 
I don't know why that noise is happening. In case you're wondering why we have to do it like that, it's because his body, each one of those bristles have different sorts of bacteria on it from what we discovered. We got the Q-tip in there. So we were doing one streak, as you can see, on his tentacle things, and then I'm going to use this Q-tip here. And just do a nice little rub. Oh, you can't see. On his face. Okay, there. Both samples have been put away. Sorry about that. My gloves are very uncomfortable. I don't know why I'm wearing, well, there, it's one glove, but I don't know why I'm wearing it. So, this creature, unfortunately, if I do not get any information on its whereabouts or where it's from, um, it will be killed, not humanely, they never humanely kill any of the animals that we have. Um, sorry, the camera ran out of space. Um, but I really don't want this little guy to die. He's so friendly and sweet. Well, as friendly as one who can't communicate with us can be. At least with certain animals, you know. Dogs wag their tails, cats hiss, <laughs> birds can chirp, even reptiles have a way to show you that they're getting annoyed. But this guy does not other than when he shocks you. It's very unfortunate to think that he's going to be executed because of it. Oh, hang on. I'm gonna write, not that, but I'm gonna write something down. Or type it up. I'm taking off my glove. said, they never humanely kill any of the alternate beings that they find. You can already see that, oh, you can't see it, right here, there's two missing spots, oh, you can't really tell, well, there's two missing spots on his skin, let me see if I can, he doesn't mind if I do. He's missing two spots, so that means they already ripped off part of his tentacles. Let's see if there's any more possible... Oh. And this right here, you can see it plainly sticking up. That was from when they ever so roughly plucked him from the ground. That actually broke part of his spinal cord. Oops, sorry, sorry. And he's missing another one right there. And the top of his head, if you look, they actually cut it open to see if there's any sort of brain in there. And then they glued it on with hot glue. and it's very unfortunate that he is suffering so much. We don't know if he can feel pain or stress, but, well, 
They say we don't know if, we, if he can feel pain, but clearly he can because if you distress him in a certain way by touching him, like how I just touched that spinal thing on his back down there, he makes a clicking noise, so I don't quite understand how they can say that we don't know enough about him to keep him alive. But I'm going to take this now, and I'm not going to pull any off. I'm just going to... Okay, so the final test, which unfortunately has to be done, I really don't want to do it, but it will be the pain sensitivity test. I have a button here. I found it in the trash. <laughs> it's sanitized. It has someone's name on it, so I'm going to try to keep it away, even though I know the agency won't look them up, but, you know, I don't want to risk it. So, we're going to lift him. Oh, please ignore my pants. They're very in style. Okay, so I'm going to very gently poke it with the sharp needle. Sorry, I didn't even touch it yet. I think I distressed him. Okay, it's okay. Let me, let me hold it. Even. So our needle, there we go, ooh, okay, so it went through, gave me a little bit of a shock, and you can hear his little distress noise, that wasn't little, he's still shocking me, it is not severe, obviously, he bit my hair somehow, that really hurt. So he can feel pain. He does have a mouth. I'm not sure where his mouth is. As you can see, you can just see his eyes, which I think those are fake eyes as they never blink, nor do they move to any sort of movement. And even hermit crabs will move their eyes to follow. Well, They'll pull their heads in, if anything, but they can move their eyes to follow. So, I think this is fake eyes, sort of like a disguise, or maybe somebody assumed that was where his eyes were, since that was the only clear spot on his face, or his whole body, really. But his eyes could be literally anywhere. All of these tentacles could actually be eyes, and all of them could be mouths. We don't know. even his eyes are up there because if you look there's two dots so it's very possible those are the eyes as well well you can also see they cut him in half basically if you look in the middle oh you can't really see it in the camera but there's a long line there, you can kind of see it. There's a long line going through his abdomen all the way around it, so I have a feeling that he can regenerate given the proper conditions. And I am assuming that, well, he can obviously feel pain. We just, we just, you know, discovered that. But. It's quite weird how the tentacles are the parts that can feel pain, but you can you can even do this. Hang on, look, ow. You can do that 
and he doesn't even care. And that also can show you that there's no brain in him that we know of because you can see my hand is touching all around. Don't worry, that is not where his, um, where his digestive system ends, if, if you know what I mean. That is actually right up here, where his brain typically should be. So, <laughs> so don't worry, I made sure that I'm touching it, but, you know, you can kind of tell, tell if something is going to make on you, you know. But yes, unfortunately, this little guy will be executed. I say executed because, I don't know, it sounds a lot cooler than being killed. But I'm mainly worried about how they will go about it because they cut him in half, he didn't die. We don't know what his lungs can carry, so it's very possible that the CO2 chambers won't work. That's what we use on mice. Well, that's what they use on mice in, like, every store. Not every store, but, you know, if you have to buy mice for your reptilians, then, you know, they're from CO2 chambers unless they're live. <laughs> um... We don't know if that would work. I guess, really, I could possibly get approval of keeping him. Because, from what we can tell, there is absolutely no threat to Earth with him. He's been on Earth for God knows how long. Um, so I don't see a reason why I wouldn't be allowed to keep him. They let me keep the abnormal birds, or what did I call them earlier? The non-earth birds. So what would make this different? Because he can electrocute us? The birds can peck us, and they're not from earth, so they probably have diseases. I don't know. I really don't want to see this little guy die though, because look, look into those either real or fake eyes and tell me that you want him to die. He's perfect in every way. I know it's part of the job to let them die, but I don't want this one to die. keep him. I'll hide him if I have to. Say he ran away during the night. We don't know how he moves. He can either do this. Which that would be pretty cool. Or he can worm away. Or maybe he can even teleport. Anyways, I shouldn't return or turn in this report seeing how I'm talking about keeping an abnormal creature or whatever the heck I called them earlier. So I'm going to keep this for personal reference. Okay. I better get going and get this guy hidden away somewhere. I don't even know where. Goodbye.